Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and today is going to be a video that is late as usual. Uh, I'm not going to extend too much on why I didn't film earlier, why I didn't post this video earlier because I, I did a post on my community tab and I explained there so you probably have seen it already but today I'm going to talk about my April book for the 12 books for 2023 challenge and that book is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy is an Indian author. She is a woman and she was born in 1961, in November 24. And she is best known for her novel The God of Small Things, the book that I'm bring, bringing you today. This, is, this book was published in 1997 and she won the Booker Prize for Fiction that same year. She is also a political activist involved in human rights and environmental causes. So I first heard about this book by another booktuber, a Brazilian booktuber, if I'm not mistaken. And she talked about it very briefly. It was like a book haul and I was intrigued just for the title, The God of Small Things. I thought the title was so original, so unexpected um, and it, well, caused me the amount of curiosity necessary to buy the book. And so that's what I did. I put it in my challenge for this year. I have to say that I post a Instagram story yesterday but I as I read this in Portuguese and the title is in Portuguese my my Instagram story the the um, text that I put there was in Portuguese as well but what I said is that without any doubt this is the more the most beautiful book that I have ever read and you may say, well, Juliana, you didn't read so many books. So for you to say that this is the most beautiful book that you have read. And that is true. But I have to talk about with the reality that I'm in. And right now, with all the books that I have read till today, this is the most beautiful one that I have ever read. So, and it's beautiful in many aspects and I think this book was well thought. I suppose that it must have uh, been a really hard work for the author because the way that this is structured, it implies that the author had to have the story of her novel very well aligned chronologically because what we have here is a story of a family, an Indian family. We start in a... Well, the thing is, is that this book is not linear. So the narrative is not linear. You will not have here the grandparent, then the, the parent and the, grand, the grandchildren. You will not have a linear narrative. You will have here back and forth in time. So she becomes at the present, then she goes back to the past, then she goes back to the present and it's this back and forth. And you will, so what happened is that, what happens is that you will be introduced to characters and to events in, an, uh, in the earlier pages of this book and you will not understand the context or who that person is or in what way is related to the other characters that you have been reading about 
and that will be slowly this um, shown to you as long uh, as you read the book so everything will make sense but you have to read the book in a whole you have to read the book as a whole so for you to create the whole puzzle and you connect the dots with every character and every event that happens and in which time that did happen and in what case relates to the other event and so on and so forth for me i never have read a book well the sound and fury by faulkner is a bit similar but still this book the god of small things is it has a particular way of going back and forth in time and it makes it ends up to make more sense than the sound and the fury by faulkner so i enjoyed much more this one so what we have here i'm going to so as this is back and forth you will have events that are dramatic and fatal and vital to the story just a, right at the beginning of the book but you as you start reading you don't understand that is vital you will understand more later right we have here as i've said a story of a family and this family is the hip family or the koshama family and they live in i am nem i am nem i am nem I, I don't know how well to pronounce it i'm so sorry about that i'm going to leave um the name right in the in the screen so you can see for yourself and in this town or in this village is a because it, this is a recondite like village it's not a city or anything is a bit isolated it exists right at the beginning we know that it exists a river and it exists a f um, factory of pickles and jellies and then we are presented to two characters called Ezda and Rael they are twins they are biovolar twins so they are a boy that is Ezda and a girl Rael right away is told to us that they are physically separated but their identity is one right away i thought that the twins would be the main characters of the book and in a way they are because well <laughs> it's hard to explain because i don't think that in the end you will have here main characters per se i suppose you can say that the twins are the main characters although we accompany the lives of many other characters in a full length and with a very profound descriptions uh, of each character or main characters shall we say so the twins are the um, are always at the back of the book we accompany their lives going back and forth and they are like our towers but we'll jump to each character a turns and we will we'll get to know them really profoundly uh, in different chapters but the twins are indirectly always there although they aren't always the main narrative of the book so we have Amu so the family is composed by Papashi that he is called Sri Benan John Hip and Papashi is the grandparent the grandfather I'm sorry the grandfather and we have Mamashi that is the grandmother and she's called Soshama. Then we have their children, so Shaku, the oldest one, a man, and Amu, 
the youngest a woman and Amu is the mother of the twins and Shaku was uh, studied abroad in England in Oxford and he uh, was there studying and he met there a woman an English woman so a white woman uh, and he married her and have a child with her called Sophie Moll and the woman is called Margaret okay I have here more or less the tree of the family with the main characters at the beginning of the book we are told that they live in, in I am Nam and that there is a factory and they talk about the twins and they talk about a funeral now I can't say this is right at the beginning of the book but as I I've told you this goes back and forth so a vital point that this is this funeral is happening right at the beginning so is a, a very much a spoiler and so I I won't tell you who died but it's it's really sad and at first you won't understand because they will tell you the name of the person who died but you at the beginning as you don't know anything else you don't really give importance to the fact you think that is a secondary thing that is happening to the main story because I went to this book knowing nothing and knowing anything about the structure the structure or the narrative or the plot or anything about it so it was a total surprise for me so I had to make notes as I was reading because this is something that I'm trying to get better at is that I when I start reading a book it's very easy for me get um, to the middle of the book and forget what happened at the beginning so I'm trying to take notes every time I start a new book, a new read so I can have a more coherent narrative of the events that are um, happening in the story that I'm reading and so I thank God I did that because if I haven't I will probably be, be very lost at the end and so I really advise you if you don't know anything about the book as I didn't it really helps like in your phone you can go to the notes on your phone and write key points of the story so you have external memory of what is happening in the book and what are the main characters who are they how they relate to each other and so on and so this ha this funeral happens and you will only have a more clear view of what happened to the middle to the end of the book there is a point in here where they will go through the story of Papashi so the grandfather the story of Mamashi the grandmother the story of Amu the mother of the twins the story of Shaku the uncle of the twins and every story is a bit well as anything in life right no one's life is perfect so Papashi was an entomologist and it was a point it uh, it happened a point in time where he where he thought he found a unique species species of uh, moth and he caught the moth he preserved it and he went to the institute to so they could investigate and evaluate if it was really a new species and they told him it was not it was a existence a variant of an existent species of moth and years later they admitted that that evalu evaluation evaluation wasn't correct and it was in fact a new species 
but as Papashi was already out of the Institute of Entomologists, the found was named after the, the, the new director of the Institute. And so it was the frustration of Papashi's life and he was very, he was very bitter because of that. He had like behaviors towards Mamashi, his wife, that were a bit not so tender and it comes a point where he even beats her and Shaku, their, their son, their first sh uh, child, caught him beating his mother and he tells him that it will be the last time that that was that would happen but you know he goes back to England but the fact is is that Papashi never touched Mamashi again but he would never speak to her again and he would use baby Koshama that is the, um, I think this is the sister of Mamashi, so, so she is the uh, grand aunt of the twins and they, she lives in the house, in the same house, because during the story it is always referring to the house of Yayam Nem. Mamashi would have a hobby that was to um, produce pickles and jellies. We have the story of Amu, the daughter of Papashi and Mamashi and we are told that when she was like 18 she was trapped in a way because she wasn't married but she was in Ayamnam where there was nothing to do or nothing to see, no one to, nowhere to go, no, no one to see like um, and so she asked her parents to go visit a, an aunt in Calcutta and there she ends up meeting her future husband and they marry and but the thing is he was an alcoholic and a liar, a compulsive liar uh, and he even because of his drinking he becomes a bit violent. So she divorces him and she comes back to the to Hayamnam, to the house of their parents. But you know, at that point she had the twins. Then we have the story of Shaku. As I said, he met a girl in England and they married and have a daughter. But Shaku, when they met, he was all athletic because he practiced rowing in the university but when they married and he he um, closed the the years of university he become fat and he maintained uh, he kept the his behaviors so it wasn't like that he changed he just maintained his habits that was chaos everywhere in this in his house and uh, dirt all over he didn't clean anything he didn't put anything away he, he smoked and and put out his cigarettes in the couch like stuff like that and so when they married and they move in together that continued the thing for margaret his wife was that he he was he was sloppy and he was fat so the attraction died a bit and in the between she met or she reunites with an old friend called Joe and she, he was a biologist and she fell in love and so but in the between she was pregnant by Chaku but she asks for the divorce and Shaku comes back to India. In the between there, they would, they would ex exchange letters. So they did maintain contact and she enjoyed it because she 
she saw herself as an ordinary woman, so she didn't thought that uh, Shaq was affected by the divorce, but she didn't imagine what he was suffering because he really loved her and she will tell news about their daughter how she was doing in school and so on and so forth and that joe was a good parent to her a good father to her and in a way it is told that shaq was happy about it but sad at, at the same time because well it wasn't him with her, with them right um and so Shaku was the one that picked up the hobby of his mother, Mamashi, of doing pickles and jellies and built a business. So he found the factory together with his mother. And so the pickles and jellies factory, pickles and jellies paradise. I think that's how it is. As I read this in Portuguese, I don't know the exact um terms in english or the exact names in english so please forgive me but you get the point and so now we understand the connection of the factory with the family but this is later in the book where you find out that the factory belongs to the family then we have a character here that is called uh, Veluta and he is a carpenter and he works in the factory. We know that he belongs to the communist party or he's an affiliate to the party, so he's kind of a revolutionary. But we also know that Velutha is considered um, inferior, inferior caste. So in this book, like there is the um, narration of the story of the, the family and each member of this family but at the same time in a subliminal way in the background there is a critic to the Indian society and so, hierarchy society of India because we have here um, a clear division between people a clear division between the importance of groups and they are the touchables and the intouchables and they are they called Velutha Parava at least in Portuguese that's how it's called in the book I don't know the term in English but that is to be the an inferior caste to the said family that is the main characters of or the main plot of the book. <laughs> but Velutha, or, well, the, this family had a history of helping inferior castes. So Velutha is a product of a school founded by the grandparent or the great-great-parent of this family. So he founded a school for the inferior castes and he's, um, he was a student there. Also, this family helped him to learn to be a, car a carpenter, a carpenter. But Velutha is um, a joyful man. So the twins love him. They weren't allowed to go to, the, to his house, but they were there every time. Um, they escape the I am Nam house to and their grandparents' house to go to um, be with Velutha, and he will have. Um, <sighs> it's so sad. <laughs> now I'm. Rem I just finished finished this book yesterday, and it was. You know, I mean, this story is is really something. And I'm not saying, I'm not going to say much more about it because I think it ruins the book. So he would play with the twins, he would um, role play with them. So they, the twins sometimes would fake they were old ladies 
and they will talk to him in a certain way and he will um, get into the joke and get into the to the play to the role play they were doing so they sh he would speak to them as if they were old ladies they would do things to his hair so he was a kid person we could say and he loved them as well and we have here um, with Velutha and the father of Velutha and the brother of Velutha we have here the confrontation of of the, um, this idea that this family was helping the lower castes but at the same time they didn't allow them to come into their house and they didn't want the twins to interact with them so they help them but they still make sure that they understood that they were inferior that they weren't worth what they were you know so it's it's a, a dangerous game to play and um unfair game to play you know you help but at the same time you make sure that the person knows that person knows that it's not worth what i'm worth so you get the feeling and will in this story will happen here a connection with this Velutha that will put in jeopardy that hierarchy and the baby Koshama the great aunt will do will t take measures to like anniki annihilate and annihilate Velutha I'm not going to say what it is, you have to read it to know, but the end is really tragic for Velutha and not just for him, I think it's tragic for all of them. The book is tragic, <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing, but <sighs> because, well, what you can do? I didn't cry, but this book deserves tears in many aspects well I'm I think I'm going to stop about the plot here I think I told you enough about what happens of what is talked about um, but you have to have in mind what I said in the beginning about the structure of this book this comeback at the present to the past to the past to the present it's um, what makes this book so special because the story will unfold to you gradually and you will understand pieces of information that were told to you at the beginning more forward so everything is uh, is like a pandora box you know things will get revealed to you and you will get a more understanding about stuff as more as you read so it's like you are yeah it's a Pandora box so it's really special and something that I really 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 appreciated in this book was the writing this author has talent and a special talent and it's incredible because this was her first novel at least published so she will do particular strategies in her writing like she for example about the moth of the papashi that he supposedly found the moth will get referred after that in many parts and many events and focal points of the book the moth will accompany the imagination of the twins and so you are always being remembered of that particular story of the past when they are in the present or when they are in the past but a bit forward um, in time and something that she also does is to separate the syllables of words like 
for example, the word after. She didn't, she didn't write just after. She writes after. And that separation gives an emphasis to that moment and to what she was talking about that you get her point. You get that emphasis and the ship that drops to you at that moment is harder than if it was just after, you know? And she will write smaller phrases, like small phrases, and sometimes a phrase will be just a word and a concept, a um, succession of words sometimes will happen so to describe what someone was seeing or, or what was happening in the um, around that moment or around the the ambience so it's it's really the way her descriptions are made are so poetic it's like it's not just describing a thing, it's like you are there. And she will make some things like she says something and she, in parentheses, she puts, um, I, know, I, I don't know how, how to call it, but I, I'm sure it has a term for that, but it's like dum dum or dum dum. Like, a drum or something like that beats hard and beats profound it has depth and she will do that in very occasions in the book so that that uh, sort of repetition in strategies and in structure will also give you a subconscious um, effect like this is important, this was profound, this mattered. And you will get into the psychology of that character that you are reading at that moment, like you get more deep than if it were, if it were just describing what was happening or what was the thought of that character and with nothing else. You know what I mean? A more simple kind of writing. So these little strategies that she applies in her writing give um, a depth, um, a more appreciation for what you are reading and you, you are grabbed to the book because of these strategies. At least for me that, that was what happened. Um, so I love the book. And I know I'm a bit torn because of what I told you, it seems like an ordinary story of a family. And it is, but it isn't. Because you have here, um, oh, you have here another character called Pillai, that he is the president of the Communist Party, if I'm not mistaken. I think I'm not confusing. The character, not the character, the, the function of this character. Um, and he will be kind of a traitor in here uh, to a character specifically. And he, you, will, you will have here um, forbidden love. You will end up this book, well, because, you know, this book is layered as I was trying to explain to you, but I think the term that I was um, found, um, looking for was layers, because you have the, the, um, the story of the family like the basis, then you have the psychology of each character, then you have the focal events that happen and that are vital in the lives of each character, then you have um, events that, that are common and that involve many characters at the same time. 
then you have the um, social critic of the social hierarchy in India. You have so many things to extract from this book. Uh, and I suppose, if I'm not mistaken, this passes between 1990-60 and 1980-something. Because something that I didn't told you was that because of that person that at the uh, beginning of the book that had died, the funeral that I was talking about, the twins are separated. So Ezda is going to live with his father and Hael stays at Ayamnam house. And they are separated for 23 years. Hael um, will go to America following her boyfriend or her husband to Boston and she will live there for a while. But baby Koshama, the great aunt, will send her a letter telling that Ezda has returned and so she comes back to India and she realizes that Ezda is a bit changed talking to anyone so he's mute and we kind of understand why that happens because Ezda like when he was a child they there was a moment where they they went to the cinema and something happens at the cinema to Ezda that he never told his mother and he never told anyone. And for some reasons Ezda never told his mother because he thought that his mother wouldn't, would like him a, a bit less. And it was crucial that he, will, that he would have told his mother what happened to him because it was, it was horrible and although Ezda at the time maybe didn't quite figure out the depth of what was happening he understood that it, it was wrong and he didn't like it in his visual instincts and he had that the, that memory would, will uh, come back to him in another fruk, fu, uh, f, um, vital moment about Velutha, the person that he loved, or one, one of the persons that he loved. The twins will have a fundamental part in the destiny of Velutha. They will not be culprits, but they will be they will be accomplices that will follow them because when they are children they are like um, seven years old or something seven to eight something like that and that happens they don't quite understand the implications and the the tour morally that they will have to confront when they are older so they will deconstruct this um, memory throughout their lives and so they only they will only understand what truly happened when they are more older and this memory will affect them in a very profound way but as i as i was saying this will be given to you in doses so you you really have to pay attention while reading this book that is some of the advice that I have to give you and please please take notes during your reading so you don't get lost in the information and who is who and what is happening and in you know the puzzle as I said before so I'm really hoping that I caught your attention and that I caught your curiosity because this book is so worth it, it's so beautiful, it's so layered as I was saying and I don't know much about the uh, history of India but I'm 
I want to know more. I want to understand more this this aspect of the separations of castes in India. And for some research that I did, the author was villainized in India. Like the critics uh, told that he, he her novel was obscene. And I don't think there is any obscenity in this book. I think this book is so well constructed, so well thought, so well delivered and so original, I will say, and so beautiful. It's really, really sad. It's a really sad story. It's not a happy ending. It's not even a hopeful ending. It's like um, memories for life that will turn you apart and betrayals and prejudices and you know hard and heavy stuff but i think you will end up this book like with so many thoughts and so many reflections to do this is a book to make you think and to confront your reality and see how different your life is and maybe for the better, maybe in a similar way of this book, so depends or on where you live. So yeah, please go read this one. This video was too long as usual, so so sorry for that, but at the same time I had to talk about everything that I wanted and I think I did, so please 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 go read it and tell me something here in the comments of your reading experience. I'm really excited to know what you thought and if you were so excited at the end of the book as I am. So yeah, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever... How do I say this? I don't remember. <laughs> I'll be posting there, you know, about books or anything else. So please go follow me and I see you on the next one. Bye!